Air India Flight 182 was an Air India flight that flew from Montreal to London, Delhi, and Bombay. It was operated on June 23, 1985 by a Boeing 747-237B registered VTEFO. It disintegrated mid-air over the Atlantic Ocean on its way from Montreal to London due to an explosion from a bomb planted by Canadian Sikh terrorists. The airliner's remnants crashed into the sea about 190 kilometers off the coast of Ireland, killing all 329 people on board, including 268 Canadians, 27 British citizens, and 24 Indian citizens. How did the terrorists manage to plant a bomb? Stick to the end of the video to find out. The bombing of Air India Flight 182 was the deadliest aviation incident in Air India's history and the world's deadliest act of aviation terrorism until the September 11, 2001 attacks. Investigators discovered that the attack was part of a larger transnational terrorist plot, including two failed plane bombings. The first bomb was supposed to detonate aboard Air India Flight 301, which was scheduled to depart from Narita International Airport in Japan, but exploded before it could be loaded. Because the perpetrators failed to account for the fact that Japan does not observe daylight saving time, this bomb exploded prematurely, killing two baggage handlers. Sikh extremists carried out the attack in retaliation for Operation Blue Star a military operation carried out by the Indian government in June 1984 to remove Sikh militants who had taken refuge in Amritsar, Punjab, India. The operation caused significant damage to the sacred site and killed many Sikh militants and civilians. This sparked widespread rage and resentment among some Sikhs, both in India and in the Sikh diaspora around the world. At 6.30 a.m. on June 22, 1985, a man identified as Manjit Singh called to confirm his reservations on Air India Flight 181-182. He was informed that he was still on the waiting list and was offered alternative arrangements, which he declined. Mr. Singh checked in with a busy line of 30 people at 8.50 a.m. for the CP flight from Vancouver to Toronto, which was scheduled to depart at 9.18 a.m. He requested that his dark brown hard-sided Samsonite suitcase be checked and transferred to Air India Flight 181 and then to Flight 182 to India. Because his seat from Toronto to Montreal and Montreal to Bombay needed to be confirmed, the agent initially refused his request to interline the baggage. Later, Rayat testified that he took the ferry from Duncan to Vancouver that morning to work on his brother's truck. According to phone records, someone called Johal's number from his Duncan home at 10.50 a.m. and again at 4 o'clock p.m. that day. Between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., Rayat was seen with another East Indian man at the Auto Marine Electric store in Burnaby near Parmar's house. He purchased two 12-volt batteries similar to those used in the explosive device tested in the woods, which were to fit into a special metal bracket he had brought with him. Canadian Pacific Airlines Flight 60 arrived in Toronto 12 minutes late at 4.22 p.m. Some passengers and luggage, including Mr. Singh's checked-in bag, were transferred from Air India Flight 182. Air India had requested extra security in response to threats from Sikh activists prompting Canada to assign extra policemen to terminals in Toronto and Montreal. All baggage was to be checked by X-ray or hand. Inspectors used a portable PDD-4 explosive sniffer after the X-ray machine failed that day. When a lit match was held an inch away, it made a loud scream, and an Air India security officer demonstrated that it should be used around the edge of the bag being tested. The crew of the Boeing 747 Squawk 2005 as requested by Shannon Airport Air Traffic Control ATC at 8.09.58 a.m. Irish time, then vanished from radar screens at 7.14.01 GMT. At the same time, a bomb hidden in a Sanyo tuner in a suitcase in the forward cargo hold exploded at 51 degrees 3.6 minutes north, 12 degrees 49 minutes west, while the plane was at 31,000 feet. It resulted in explosive decompression and the aircraft breaking up in midair. The wreckage was discovered in 6,700 feet of water off the southwest coast of Ireland, 120 miles offshore of County Cork. Shannon ATC did not receive a mayday call. ATC instructed aircraft in the area to contact Air India, but they were unable to do so. Meanwhile, around 1.22 p.m., L. Singh checked in for the 1.37 p.m. CP Air Flight 003 to Tokyo, which was to be transferred to Air India Flight 301 to Bangkok. L. Singh, on the other hand, did not board the flight. L. Singh's second checked bag boarded Canadian Pacific Airlines Flight 003 from Vancouver to Tokyo. On this flight, there were no X-ray inspections of the luggage. Its intended target was Air India Flight 301, 
which was scheduled to depart with 177 passengers and crew bound for Bangkok Don Muang, but it exploded at Narita International Airport's terminal 55 minutes before the Flight 182 bombing. The cargo ship Laurentian Forest discovered the wreckage of the aircraft and many bodies floating in the water by 9.13 UTC. The Civil Aviation Minister of India stated that a bomb could have destroyed the plane and that the cause was most likely an explosion. Previous 747s were damaged or killed on the ground, but this was the first time a jumbo jet was brought down by sabotage. It crashed in mid-air. Hypoxia was detected in 26 of the bodies. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation provided a list of casualties. There were 268 Canadians, 27 Britons, 22 Indians, and 12 people of unknown nationality among the victims. The majority of the passengers were Canadians of Indian descent. There were between 82 and 86 children on board, including six infants. The plane carried 29 entire families. Two children who were not on board had both parents on board, leaving them orphaned. Their entire families had six sets of children. 32 people were not on the plane, but had the rest of their families on board. Many threads of the plot were discovered during the six-year global investigation. Following the recovery of wreckage and bodies from the surface, it was decided to recover wreckage and recorders from the seafloor. The fact that the voice and flight recorders were cut out simultaneously and damaged to parts recovered from the forward cargo bay consistent with a blast established that a bomb near the forward cargo hold most likely brought the plane down. The flight was quickly linked to an earlier bombing in Japan that originated in Vancouver. The investigation revealed that the bombing was carried out by Sikh extremists seeking vengeance for Operation Blue Star a military operation carried out by the Indian government at the Golden Temple in Amritsar in June 1984. Members of Canada's Sikh diaspora planned and carried out the attack. The manner in which the bomb was planted on the aircraft was an essential investigation finding. The bomb was hidden in a suitcase that was checked onto a connecting flight in Vancouver, Canada. After that, the suitcase was transferred to Air India Flight 182 in Toronto. The bomb was built with dynamite and a timing device, and it was set to detonate while the plane was flying over the Atlantic Ocean. The investigation also revealed a parallel plot to bomb another Air India flight, Flight 301, on its way from Tokyo to Bangkok. A second bomb, constructed similarly to the one used on Flight 182, was placed in a suitcase and checked onto a flight in Vancouver. However, the bomb exploded prematurely at Tokyo's Narita International Airport, killing Investigators discovered evidence linking the plot to a network of individuals, some of whom had ties to militant Sikh organizations. The evidence included phone records, airline tickets, and associations between the individuals under investigation. Numerous challenges arose during the investigation, including difficulties gathering evidence from multiple countries and coordinating with foreign law enforcement agencies. Several people were arrested and charged in connection with the bombing due to the investigation. Those charged include Talwinder Singh Parmar, who was thought to be the plot's mastermind, and Indrajit Singh Riyat, who was found guilty of involvement in the bomb's construction. Parmar was killed in India in 1992 during a police encounter, and Riyat was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to prison. Riputaman Singh Malik and Ajib Singh Bagri were charged with multiple counts related to the bombing, including murder and conspiracy in 2000. They were acquitted in 2005 after a lengthy trial due to insufficient evidence to support a conviction. Many questions about the bombing remain unanswered, despite the extensive investigation. To further investigate the events leading up to the bombing, the investigation, and the Canadian government's response, the Canadian government established a commission of inquiry into the investigation of the bombing of Air India Flight 182, led by Justice John Major. Thank you for stopping by to watch. Please subscribe to the channel and post your video recommendations in the comments area if you'd like us to do more films like this.